Hello and welcome to the Exchange 2013 Bootcamp. I'm Paul Cunningham of Exchange Server Pro and this is just a quick introductory video to let you know what we'll be getting into uh, in this series of Bootcamp videos. Alright, so what is this Bootcamp about? So basically what I want to do is uh, give you a series of videos that help get you started with installing and configuring Exchange Server 2013. We'll be learning some real world practical skills the type of stuff that's designed to help you on the job. And along the way, you get to create a test lab environment. So that's something you can keep using uh, to further train and, and uh, learn more skills with Exchange Server 2013 and other Microsoft technologies as well. Now, we'll emphasize this is not a certification exam training course. It's not designed to line up with all of the exam objectives. It's not designed to prepare you specifically for the exam. You will learn a lot of skills that uh, you would be that would be covered in the exam but if you want to go ahead and sit the certification exam then I would recommend that you actually review those exam objectives yourself and make sure that you cover any gaps that this boot camp uh, and uh, any other training here do not cover and I'll also emphasize this is not an advanced or master level training course it is aimed more at the beginner to intermediate administrator someone who has little to no exchange uh, server experience in the past. Uh, I'm trying to make this very beginner friendly um, but if you have worked with versions of Exchange Server before you should hopefully still learn some new things throughout this uh, but certainly it's not designed to go right down to that master level of depth. So what are you going to need if you want to follow along with this training uh, and create your own virtual test lab environment? Obviously, you need a good computer um, with a CPU that's capable of virtualization. So really, any CPU from the last couple of years should do the job there, but just double check that the one you have uh, supports virtualization. Lots of memory is really important for running virtual machines. Look, these days, I would recommend at least 16 gigabytes. And it's not that unusual to get 16 gigabytes in a PC or laptop anyway. So hopefully that's within reach of most of you. Plenty of disk storage is also important, uh, maybe even more than the sheer size of the disk, is the speed of the disk. If you have an SSD drive, uh, you will find that will perform a lot better. Uh, I highly recommend an SSD drive. In fact, I now use SSD drives in all of my laptops and uh, desktop computers at home um, because the performance is just, is just worth it, especially when you're running virtual machines. Uh, you will need, obviously, an internet connection so you can download the uh, trial versions of Windows Server and Exchange Server or a TechNet subscription if you've still got an active TechNet subscription uh, running before it, they finally expire, all of those. That would be pretty handy. A domain name, if possible. Look, they're pretty cheap these days, so registering a domain name uh, to use for your test lab environment would be a good idea. You can do that for just a few dollars through um, one of the cheap um, domain name registrars online. And if you would like to connect your test lab to the outside world um, for, for inbound and outbound mail flow and for services such as uh, Outlook Web Access, then a public IP address would be needed. Now, if you have just a residential internet connection like mine where you have a dynamic IP address, that's fine. I'll try and demonstrate how I get around uh, issues with dynamic IP addresses and having you know external uh, webmail URLs and things like that. Um, but you will probably find that for uh, sending mail that some um, other servers out on the internet will probably treat your mail very suspiciously or probably even just block it as spam because you're on a dynamic IP address range. Uh, so, um, you know, for testing purposes, this should be, uh, it should be fine, but you probably wouldn't want to try and run a uh, production network off that uh, dynamic IP address. So a few recommendations if you're looking to build or buy uh, some equipment to run your test lab with. I recommend if you're looking to buy a whole system, check out Jeff uh, Guillet's Hyper-V server uh, article. He's um, built, uh, sorry, written a series of articles uh, over a couple of years where he's built his home Hyper-V lab servers using, um, you know, components that you can just buy from retail computer stores and buy online and things like that. And he tends to get away at a very good price for very good performance. So it's definitely worth checking out if you're looking for a few ideas for equipment to buy. You can just use Windows uh, 8.1 or Windows Server 2012, which come with Hyper-V. Uh, you don't have to use other hypervisors um, if you don't want to, but if you have access to something like VMware or Zen Server, 
that you're more familiar with, by all means, you can use one of those. I'll be using, uh, for these particular videos, just my Windows 8.1 workstation with Hyper-V uh, on the workstation. Um, and some of you may be thinking, well, what about Windows Azure? Could we use that to host the virtual machines? Um, I, I would say yes, you possibly could look at doing that. Um, however, I don't have any personal experience with running an Exchange server in Windows Azure. Uh, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. I would just be concerned personally about potential costs involved uh, in running that virtual machine and, and using up um, CPU and memory uh, hours. Um, within that cloud environment. So uh, if that's something you want to explore, uh, obviously feel free, just be aware that there may be some cost implications and, and you'd want to be uh, across all of those risks before you go leaving virtual machines running in, in Azure. So what will we be installing uh, for this test lab? What I'm going to demonstrate is running a Windows Server 2012 domain controller. I'll be allocating about two gigabytes of memory to mine uh, and an Exchange Server 2013 RTM with cumulative update three multi-role server and I'll be giving that one about four gigabytes of memory so you can see how quickly um, that 16 gig of memory uh, on my machine starts to get eaten up. Now at the time I'm recording this uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 is actually the latest operating system um, but with Exchange Server 2013 it's not yet supported so to stay within uh, the the supported operating systems for Exchange Server in terms of where the Exchange Server is running as well as the domain controllers in the environment. Uh, I'll be sticking with Windows Server 2012. If that situation has changed by the time you're watching these videos, by all means check out what the latest support uh, matrix is. You can feel free to uh, install Server 2012 R2 if you like. From the perspective of uh, the Exchange stuff we'll be working on, I don't think there'll be anything really significant um, that would cause a problem. And I'll also be installing a Windows 7 SP1 client with Office 2013 just to demonstrate the client and user experience side of things. I'm going to give that one about two gigabytes of memory because that runs pretty well like that. All right, so that's all I've got for you in this quick introduction. So now we can get started.